Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy. And today we are gonna do a non-spoiler review for the new animated film that came out from Warner Brothers Home Entertainment, which is Catwoman Hunted. And full transparency, this was sent to me as a you know review copy from Warner Bros. Home Entertainment. So thank you to the people over there that kept me on their you know on their press list. Um, actually, I tried to get off of every press list that I'm currently on. Uh, obviously, I'm going through a lot of changes, and I'm trying to figure things out moving forward. And uh, one of the things is I wanted to disconnect a little bit from uh, getting review copies and things like that, or having access to information or things. And uh, and so I was really you know happy to see that Warner Brothers was like you know what. You know we don't want to let you go so uh if you don't mind we're still going to send you a couple things to, you know to review and be honest with uh, your reviews like you always have and that means the world so i have this copy that came in the mail and as always if something is given to me and i'm able to i try to pass it forward so there's a free digital copy that comes with this and i'm going to give that code away right now right there first person go to that website and put that code in it's a free full copy of Catwoman hunted on digital so check that out and if you get the copy let me know what your review is of this movie down below and in the comment section we might get into spoilers um so you know avoid the comment section i guess if you don't want spoilers but if you are curious about this movie like i was when it was first announced you know stick around i'm not going to get into the full details of the movie but i will give you kind of my broad thoughts on it this movie is directed by shinsuke terasawa and it's written by greg wiseman and i am not uh you know familiar with shinsuke's work but I am familiar with Greg Weissman. Um, obviously, I love Gargoyles. I love Spectacular Spider-Man, Young Justice, you know, Rebels, Star Wars Rebels. Everything he's been involved with, I've been a really big fan of. This movie, I'll be honest, I'm kind of in the middle, you know, but a little bit more positive than, you know, the negative in the middle. Um, because I think it's a visually neat looking movie. It's very stylized. Uh, from the moment you get the opening credits and it's a kind of this jazzy James Bondy, you know, mixed with like, a, you know, Japanese anime style, you know, like Cowboy Bebop or something like it kind of has that influence. And I, so I was like, OK, I'm kind of on board with this. And then as the story started, I was really on board because it's like starts off with Catwoman dressed as like the, uh, you know, the old school Catwoman from the comic books, like the classic Catwoman. And she's at a costume party where rich people have gathered and a bunch of supervillains are secretly gathering at this party, including Black Mask and Barbara Ann Minerva, Tobias Whale, you know, just kind of like a fun rogues gallery of different villains from the DC universe. And they're all gathering at this party and Catwoman is essentially crazy crashing the party to steal a really rare gem, of course, right? Like that's always Selena's thing is she finds, you know, information about a rare gem, she's going to go after it. So that's kind of the setup of this movie. And the whole movie is basically Selena gets the gem and then tries to get away with it. But then it turns out there's a bigger operation going on with the FBI and Batwoman who are trying to catch these villains. Uh, so the gem ends up back in the hands of the villains. And then Catwoman has to team up and work with the FBI, which is King Faraday and Julia Pennyworth, you know, Alfred Pennyworth's daughter, and also uh, Batwoman. Elizabeth Gillies does a voice of Catwoman in this, and I think she does a really great job. She's kind of carefree. She's very over the top at times. Uh, she's having fun. You can definitely tell she's having a lot of fun. And Stephanie Beatrice, who plays Batwoman in this, is great. Actually, I like her from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And so hearing her in this as Batwoman, as like the stoic straight man of the story, um, is pretty great because there's kind of an A-team vibe going on here with her and King Faraday and uh, Julia Pennyworth. They're like the A-team for Interpol. And they're kind of working with Catwoman. They're forced to in a way because Catwoman tried to steal a diamond from, you know, Barbara and Minerva and Black Mask and all of them at the party at the beginning. And so she is like, all right, I, you know, we got to work together to take down this string of bad guys because there's a, a bigger thing going on here that, you know, they have like connections all over the world and they're, a, you know, a new organization that's rising and all these villains that are being beaten up daily by superheroes are kind of flocking to them as new members. And so we got to take them down. It's up to us because we know about their existence. So I kind of I kind of like that, you know, and it harkens back to the comic books and stuff. And so I was I liked all that dynamic, but I really liked that Catwoman was able to get under Batwoman's skin a lot. Like she was like able to flirt with her and mess with her and get her to act unprofessional at times uh, and also get her to act emotionally at times and when you have a character that's stoic like a batman or in this version of batwoman who's a little bit more straight laced and you know and no nonsense it's kind of fun to break their character right uh, and that's what catwoman kind of relishes at is that she tries to get people to step out of their comfort zone or the zone they're like you know they're mostly in uh, you know at times when they're like getting ready to engage in battle or go on a mission and she's like ruffles their feathers uh, in a playful way. Uh, and so, you know, I just love that. And so that's there's a lot of that in this. And so you can tell 
the vibe of this was, hey, let's have fun. Let's uh, let's just do something that's fun. Let's throw in a bunch of villains, have them all fight Catwoman. You get a Solomon Grundy versus Catwoman fight in this. Um, you get a bunch of cool things like um, I think Nosferatu is in this and Cheshire and they fight uh, Catwoman and Batwoman at one point. Uh, Barbara Ann Minerva obviously shows up as Cheetah. And she has a great fight scene. Tobias Whale even has a great fight scene towards the end, uh, who I love, uh, voiced by Keith David in this, who's great. Jonathan Frakes, who does uh, the voice of King Faraday in this, does really great. And also, as a Supernatural fan, um, Lauren Cohen, who is also on uh, Walking Dead, she does the voice of Julia Pennyworth. So I think this movie has a great cast, and I think the fun vibe is works for the what they're going for but it was funny because me and alex we were watching batman ninja a while ago and our reaction to that was man i wonder if this had an american writer to kind of uh, streamline a story in a way um you know would that have helped go along well with the visuals because i think batman ninja was really cool and it was very japanese like in the storytelling and the style and i liked that but i did feel like i you know the story kind of I don't know, it was like, oh, he tra travels back in time. And to me, I think I would have rather just seen a feudal version of Batman, like in Elseworlds, where he's just Batman's in feudal Japan. Um, and it wouldn't have been Bruce Wayne or something. Like, I think I would have probably liked that more. But who knows, that could have been a Warner Brothers mandate or s someone's note saying, it can't be that, it's got to be this time travel thing. And so I think that messed with the story a little bit, or at least my enjoyment of it. So in this one, I was like, I wonder, we have Greg Wiseman, who's a very talented writer, uh, writing uh, essentially what should be an anime and he's got a great track record of writing great stories and then you have an anime director coming in and and like fleshing that out um i thought that was interesting but i thought it would work better than it does in this like i love greg wiseman stuff but i feel like some of the beats in this movie just didn't work for me on some level and i understand they were going for that over the top fun and kind of craziness at times and almost a team mentality where you know uh, catwoman's the wild card and she's kind of almost screwing up each mission they go on it's like okay i got the vibe i know what you were going for in a, in a way or at least i think i do um but mixed in with like an anime sensibility and, and pacing and storytelling uh, but at times i just felt like eh, it wasn't it didn't pull me in completely um i did like it though overall i think uh, my overall rating of this is probably a six and a half out of 10. And so to me, I'm like, yeah, that's still pretty good because that's more in the positive than in the negative. And I'm definitely glad I have it because I definitely want to rewatch it again. I want to watch the, I watched one of the um, extra features on here where it was like a, a making of the movie, like finding the voices, but there's another one on here that I want to check out too. So, uh, so if you're a Catwoman fan, like I am, like I, you know, I picked up uh, the Batman 89 variant cover at Megacon, you know, of the Selena Kyle from the uh, Tim Burton movies. So I love that. I got the new figure from the uh, Batman movie uh, played by Zoe Kravitz. Um, so I'm excited to, you know, check this out and add that to my collection once I unbox her. So, you know, this is a character I, I've been a fan of for years. I, you know, I love her. I love Batwoman even from the Greg Rucka Detective Comics run when he first introduced her. I loved her there and, I, you know, and I like seeing different versions of her. I haven't really got into the show too much, um, but I did kind of like this version of her, especially bouncing off Selena. And I think to me that was the strongest uh, thing done in this movie was the relationship between Batwoman and Catwoman. And I think that's good because this movie, that's the major focus, right? Is to get that dynamic between them to help carry the story. So I think they were the strongest parts of this movie. And I feel like everything else was kind of fun, but uh, but I didn't really get pulled in by some of the other elements. I was just kind of like interested in that relationship and how they keep uh, you know ruffling each other's feathers and getting a one up on each other uh, to the point where at the end even Catwoman reveals what she's really doing there. She has other motives, right? Like she always has ulterior motives. So it wasn't just about this gem and working with uh, Interpol to take down these villains for one reason. There was a little bit more going on there. So. You know, I like that, although I feel like it felt a little tacked on at the end, but it still, it does feel like a Selena thing that she would do, where she would reveal, like, her true motives at some point. And so, uh, so that, it still worked overall for me. But to me, the definite strength of this movie is the Batwoman-Catwoman relationship, and they're, you know, pairing up throughout the movie. Um, and some of the humor, I think, landed too, but there was, and some of the fight scenes are great, but I just think, like, it was just throwing darts at a dartboard of like, you know, kind of how Batman hushes where they throw in a bunch of villains because Jim Lee just wanted to draw those villains. So, you know, uh, Jeff Loeb had to figure out a story to tell but squeezing all those villains. That could have been what happened here where some artist or designer or the director was like, we want to throw in these characters and these characters. And then, you know, Greg Wiseman's like, okay, I got to figure out how to put all of them in a story. And I think he did the best he could, but at the same time, I also feel like it could have been done a little bit better. Um, but those are just my thoughts on it and my opinions. Uh, I still think it's worth picking up and, and adding to your collection, especially if you're a Catwoman fan, because I think they 
you know, nailed her character really, really well. And if you're a Batwoman fan, I would say this is leagues above some of the other versions and incarnations I've seen of the character. And I really liked what Stephanie Beatrice did and brought to the character in this. So those are my two major positives. Uh, the negative, I feel like, is some of the some of the script, some of the scenarios that play out in the script. Um, but overall, still a good time, still fun, still worth watching. So check it out and let me know what you think if you've seen the movie down below. And we'll continue the conversation as always down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.